What is going on everybody? Welcome to the third data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is Pandas I.O. which is short for input output. So with Pandas you can input output multiple data formats. So up until now we've shown you know I.O. with the API where you didn't really actually have to do anything as far as I.O. is concerned. Uh, and then we showed in the second video doing it with a dictionary. Again, no fancy I.O. is required. But when you start thinking about how you're going to handle a CSV, a text, the HDF file, XLS, and so on, or HTML, SQL, each file has to be handled a little different. But with pandas, typically the input output is still going to be just one line. It's going to be into a data frame and you're ready to go, no different than how you would handle anything else. So uh, that's what we're going to kind of talk about here is how to use the I.O. Um, kind of uh, framework and what you can do, how you can import and name things, change the index, and so on. So anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bop on over to this website, quandl.com, Q-U-A-N-D-L.com. For this tutorial, you won't need an account or anything. You can stay logged out. Uh, eventually, you will need an account because we're going to use an API key and stuff. It's totally free. They do have premium stuff, but uh, we'll just use all the free stuff. So anyway, you might want to think about making an account with them because we're going to use them relatively quickly, but not for this tutorial. So when you go to Quandl, basically what they have is just data sets galore for like everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what's nice is their data sets are pretty well normalized. They, Quandl also has an API, or a module, well an API, but also a module that works with their API. Again, in this tutorial we won't be using that, but soon we will. And it's actually really easy to use. Um, and, but even if you didn't use it, the Quandl is really simple to grab data from. Anyway, we're going to get into housing prices and real estate and all that. because so we're going to pretend that we're billionaire investors. Uh, so that's what we'll do. So uh, first, let's say you're looking for a house in Austin, Texas. So maybe we would look for like, you know, housing prices 77006. That's the zip code for Austin. Now, um, at least I think it is. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. Uh, so here we go. We've got Zillow Home Value Index Median Price for that zip code. That's from 2008 onward. I'm hoping we could find a longer one. Not really. We have some longer indexes here from 1975. That's okay. We don't need a lot of data. We're not going to really do much. So let's say you click on this one. So these are this is your basically your home value index for the zip code. And so as you can see, really fairly recently, the home prices have been uh, pretty much skyrocketing. So from here, uh, you can do a few things. Export data. This would be from uh, any of the, the here. First of all, you have the code here. And then this would be if you're using, say you're using the Python library, which we'll talk about later, you don't have to worry about that now, but you would click on this and bam, that's the code you would get, and it automatically stuffs it into a pandas data frame. Awesome. Now, um, we'll leave this aside for now, and what we're looking for is download. We're going to go to download, and then you can choose XML, JSON, Excel, CSV. Well, it just so happens that pandas can import all of these data types. We're just going to use CSV for now. We'll click that, bam, you get the download. We'll drag over the tutorials right here, and I'm just going to click and drag this into uh, here. Now, um, the next thing that I do want to cover, actually, let's go to our friend google.com. And let's say you are uh, curious about something with pandas. Well, pandas actually has relatively decent documentation. So we could say pandas IO, and here you go, you got your IO tools here. These are basically all of the data types that we can read in. Pickle, clipboard, strata, GBQ, or stata, HTML, message pack JSON, SQL, HDF, Excel, CSV, and you can even put it back out. So this is to read from, this is to. Okay. So you can get all kinds of information here. Also, this is basically the documentation here. This is just all the stuff that pandas can do for you. We'll be covering most of this stuff uh, here, but if there's something else you want to do with pandas, chances are you can do it. It's just it's somewhere hidden in these documents. Moving that along. Now, uh, you, now we've got the CSV. This is where this is the script we're working on right now. So this is in the same directory. Now I'm on Windows. I can reference this locally. If you're on Linux and maybe you're executing from the shell or something like this, uh, you may need to give the full path. I'm going to specify just a local path, but you may need to give the full path, depending on how you're executing this code. So moving this over, 
Uh, the first thing that we would do to read the CSV, well, first of all, we actually have to import pandas. So import pandas as pd as usual. Then we're going to say df equals pd.read underscore csv. That's to read the CSV. But again, if you were reading uh, maybe an Excel, like an XLS or XLSX, boom, you would use this. If you're reading an HDF5 file, read HDF. SQL would be a little different. <laughs> you have to make the connection and all of that. And anyway, and then HTML is a little different too. We may touch on that briefly. But anyway, moving along. Read CSV. Now you specify the path. Uh, so, like I said, we're just going to use the local path. So I'm going to just do this copy, come over here, paste. Done. Now, print df.head, and we get eventually, hopefully, maybe, a data frame. Boom. Now, of course, we see that uh, date is not our index, and we're being assigned this kind of meh index. So what we can do is we can close out of here, and we can do our df.setIndex. And don't forget, we have to say in place equals true, or redefine the data frame. So df.set underscore index. We're going to set it to the date column. And we're going to say in place equals true. And then let's go ahead and df.2 underscore CSV. And we're going to save it to, uh, we're just going to call it new CSV2 dot CSV. Okay. So that will actually save to a CSV uh, our information. Let me pull up the, uh, where we are. Let's see, data analysis. There we go. So we'll save and run that. And that outputs it to a CSV, which we can see new CSV2 here. We could open that up. We could look at it if we wanted. Uh, but that should be our data. Now, I'm going to move this over. Uh, feel free to open that and peek around if you want, but it's a CSV file. So, and it has, should have your all your information in it. In fact, let's pop it open. Right, so you've got your header, date, and then value. And there, there's all your data. So that, just so you know, it's a successful CSV. Moving this over, now what, what we're going to do is we're going to read it back in. So uh, we're going to redefine data frames. So we're going to say df equals pd.read underscore csv. And we're going to read in new, new csv2.csv. Now we're going to say print df.head. And we're going to see, though, what ends up happening is we're back to having date as just a regular column, not as the index we tried to set it to before we saved it. That's because a CSV file does not have any attribute index. Okay, <laughs> that just doesn't happen. So what we can do instead is in basically all of these IOs. So we're doing read CSV, but basically in any of these um, IO kind of things, like read Excel, HDF, whatever, you, well, HDF is a little different, but read HTML or, I don't know, Excel, CSV, whatever. Uh, you can specify the index column when you read it in. So we could take this, copy, paste, and then we could say index underscore call equals zero. Now we're going to print it. We'll print the old one and the new one. And then, so this is the one without it, reading from CSV2. This is the new one. Bang. So now we actually have the new, you know, we're, we're specifying date as the index. Next, uh, we have this kind of, this value column. Now, that's all fine and dandy when we know uh, that we're working with the housing price index for one data set. But what if we're grabbing the housing price index from Austin, Houston, Dallas? Okay, we've got three. Well, each column, in theory, would be called value. And then you might have a value X, Y, Z, or value 1, 2, 3, and so on. That's a problem. Okay, we, we need to know <laughs> what column that is. So how might we handle that? Well, we would want to rename the column. So one way that you could do that is the following. If you want to rename every single column, the way that you would do that is uh, you would say df.columns equals, and now we just have that one. Don't forget, because we, we set the index. An index is not a column. It looks like a column, but it's not a column anymore. We've revoked its column status. So df.columns, now we have one column. So we just need to name one column. And we're going to call that house, actually, let's call it Austin HPI, house price index HPI. df.columns, Austin HPI, boom. Now, print, again, df.head, save and run. 
We have a bunch of output here, but the last one is Austin HPI, and you've renamed that column. You can also do df.rename and then columns, and it's a dictionary and stuff. We will talk about that later on in the series. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to do is uh, save it to a CSV file. So let's say we want to save that. So we would say uh, df.2 underscore CSV, and we'll save this as new CSV 3csv Fine and good, cool. We should have a new CSV. Here it is, new CSV3. Open that up. Uh, new CSV2 is refreshed, but that's okay. Here's new CSV3. And you can see it has this new column header as Austin HPI. What if, however, you do not want these headers in the file immediately? Okay, what if you just want this to be data? Well, we can handle for that. So we can close out of this and as you go df.2csv, let's copy that, paste, we'll call it new csv4.csv, and what we can say is header equals false. Save and run that. Runs, new csv4, let me pop that open real quick, and now we actually have no headers there at all, it's just the data. Cool. Now, what if we want to read a CSV back in that has no header, right? Because the other ones have had headers. So what if you're reading a CSV that has no header? So you would say something like this. Like, what if we have um, df equals pd.read underscore CSV. We're going to read from new CSV4.csv. And then we're going to say names. These are the names of the columns that uh, we have. We know we have two columns. So the names would be, the first one is date. The second one is Austin HPI. Finally, we know we want to set the index right away. So we've already covered that up here. So we'll just take this, copy, paste. And that just sets the index as 0. The 0th is the date. So we're all set. Now we can print df.head. Save and run that. Pull this up. And that is from the most recent one. Without any headers, we named the columns whatever the heck we wanted. And we set the index to be 0. Cool. So we brought all that information in. Now, what we can do, however, is you can say uh, you're reading a CSV. Now, as I was saying before, you can actually use pandas to be a sort of a converter of data types. So if you want to convert from CSV to maybe XLS, or XLX, yes, I can never remember. Anyway, if you want to convert it to, say, an Excel, you can do that. If you want to convert it to HTML, you can do that. So for example, uh, I like to use pandas with uh, my databases a lot. So my tables in my database, and a lot of times you store information there. I read it into a pandas data frame, do whatever I need to do. I usually want to display it into like a graph or something like that. So I do whatever you need to do, put it in the graphing format that you want, pop out the graph to HTML data, or usually you're feeding a JSON into it, which just so happens that what pandas has to JSON, yup. So anyway, you can uh, do all kinds of stuff like that. So like for example, we're reading in a CSV, let's convert it to an HTML. What does that mean we're gonna do? It's gonna convert your pandas data frame to an HTML table. That makes the most sense. The data is in table format. So how would we do that? So we would say df.2 underscore HTML and then we would convert that to example.html, run that, and sure enough, there you have example.html. We can open that in Chrome. Where is Chrome? Here we go. Bring that over, and here it is. This is your data frame. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, and then if we open that, we can open that in Notepad++ just so you can see it indeed converted it to HTML. We can also do XML and all kinds of really cool stuff. Close that out. Closing this out. Now, um, what we're going to do, let's see if I want to change anything else. Well, yeah, well, actually, what we'll do is uh, let's read, let's do this. Let's say uh, we'll cover renaming columns the other way uh, before we close this one out. So let's say df equals pd.read underscore csv. We'll read in new csv4. Whoops, we need to quotes here. New CSV 4csv We'll say the names are equal to uh, date and Austin underscore HPI. That's fine. Let's print df.head. We're not setting the index here because we want to have two columns so I can show you renaming just one column. Because so far this other one, df.columns, you'd have to set all of the columns. 
So let me go ahead. I'm going to comment out all these other data frames because that's a lot of data frames. We already have this new CSV4 that's been created, so we don't need any of that other information. So let me run this. So there is your information, date, Austin, HPI. Also, I don't remember if I've said, if you want to bulk comment, uh, you press Alt-3 if you're in IDLE, Alt-4 on comments, just in case anybody wants to know how you do that really fast. Anyway, uh, so there we go. We had the two columns. Now, how do you rename a column? Well, you can say df.rename, rename, and you can rename various things in here. One of the things that you could rename is columns. You can say columns is equal in like curly braces, and we've been using Austin HPI, and then uh, to rename it, colon, what you want to rename it with. Uh, let's do 77006 h underscore HPI, and then we'll say in place equals true, and then finally print df.head, save and run that, boom, you've renamed a single column, we retained date. Now, of course, like I was saying, you um, you would obviously want your date to be the index, but we only had two columns that we were working with. So I wanted to retain date just so you could see that you could rename one column at a time, you know, if you if you really wanted to. Now, moving on into the next tutorial, we're going to be diving in a little deeper with real estate investing and stuff like that. Just just as an example, you don't need to know anything about real estate investing. It's going to be a pretty uh, upper level, and by upper level, I mean not complex. Uh, not intricate uh, tutorial. We probably will not uh, stumble upon anything that's going to make us billionaires, but the idea is just to have a kind of a project that we can work around and sample data to work with. Anyways, that's part three. Again, if it was really fast or whatever, you want to review it, you can always rewatch the video, or you can go to pythonprogramming.net. All the tutorials uh, are there. If you're watching the video, the sample code is all already there, so you can check it out and follow along that way if you want. Uh, otherwise, questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, leave them below, and until next time.